I'm not about to be the test dummy test subject. So then I'm looking at her, I'm like, so it hurts? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, all right, well, none of y'all is trying nothing on me. So <laughs> yeah, so, like you over here crying over a baby that ain't even yours. You like it what you see? Welcome back to my channel welcome if you are new if you are new before you leave here today make sure you hit that subscribe button turn on your post bell notifications so you are notified every time you get upload a video and definitely chat with me in the comments below so boom as y'all can tell by the title today i am doing my labor and delivery story time today is actually exactly one week since i gave birth to my beautiful baby girl so if you guys haven't already watched the actual labor and delivery vlog i will link it in the description box her name was also revealed in that video so make sure y'all will actually watch through the video i know it's kind of long but don't be skipping around and all that good stuff so um as i have mentioned a lot of times throughout that video and in the title itself, my labor and delivery was very, very unexpected. My original due date, so I actually kind of had two due dates, kind of not really. So um, according to the sonograms, my due date should have been October 15th. But according to my the day of my last period, it should have been October 18th. My sonogram tag had told me like, all right, your due date is the 15th. Don't listen to the nurses and the doctors. They're going to try to change it around. It's the 15th. But then the nurses and the doctors said, no, it's the 18th. So whatever. I At the beginning, I was going off of the 18th. But then I was, you know, anxious for her to get here. So I started going off the 15th because it was earlier. But while I was in the doctors in the hospital, they were going off of the 18th or whatever. So today is a Sunday. I would have been 36 weeks today. My daughter is a week old today and as I mentioned in the end of the last week's vlog she is in the NICU because she was born five weeks early but she's fine y'all everything's okay they're just making sure she's able to do on her own before she can officially come home. So let's rewind to the day that my water broke. So boom my water actually broke on my boyfriend's birthday her father's birthday and it broke late at night so granted i wasn't expecting her to come on his birthday even though i'm sure he would have been dumb hype if she did but at this point it's like okay dang she's gonna be a virgo y'all if you are new to my channel and y'all do not know i ain't got nothing against virgos y'all cool peoples or whatever but like my entire family is virgo so i kind of wanted some like new energy in my life my mom's a virgo my dad's a virgo my aunt's a virgo my uncle's a virgo my uncle's daughter's a virgo my boyfriend's a Virgo, my daughter's a Virgo now, my best friend, well she's not my best friend, but one of my closest friends is a Virgo. I just have, I'm surrounded by so many Virgos and I don't know a lot of Libras, so I was kind of looking forward for, to her being a Libra, but whatever, back to the story. So, day of my boyfriend's birthday, we didn't really do much, I don't know why we didn't do much, but we were in the mall. We went to the mall, I don't know what we went to the mall for honestly, but we was at the mall and he wanted this game or whatever. So we had went to the GameStop and I got him the game for his birthday, but we was in the mall for a good minute and I was doing a lot of walking y'all and my stomach did start hurting, but I didn't think nothing of it because granted I was pregnant during the, you know, Corona era. So I spent a lot of time inside my pregnancy. So I haven't been doing as much walking. So all that walking I did that day, I guess must've been a lot, took a toll on my body, ah, ah, ah. So the plan was after we left the mall, he was going to meet up with his friends or whatever and they was gonna have like a little get together and I was supposed to be cooking or whatever. So I got home and he dropped me off at home and then he left right back out. So then I'm home and I was doing some business orders or whatever and it's not TMI but it's kind of funny to be saying on camera but boom I farted <laughs> I farted and then like a little bit of liquid came out so I'm thinking I'm like did I just like pee on myself a little bit so I actually texted him y'all and I'm like why well, I just pissed on myself <laughs> but like I'm really thinking it's pee I'm not thinking it's not pee so I got like only a little bit came out so I'm like all right let me get up and actually go to the bathroom so I got up and I went to the bathroom and when I pulled down my pants it's like a puddle in my underwear so i'm like i didn't even like use the bathroom that much and it was just weird so whatever i let out the rest of um you know the pee or whatever so then i stand up and it's still dripping so i'm like what is going on <laughs> so it's still dripping so then i walk to my other bathroom and it's still dripping and at this point it made a puddle so i'm like what is going on so then i went and called my mom and I'm like, um, I think 
my water just broke. So she's like, what? Oh my God. Da -da -da -da. So she's with her friend at this point or whatever. And her friend's like, oh, make sure you, well, obviously they're telling me to go to the hospital, but my boyfriend wasn't here. So I didn't have like a ride to get to the hospital. She's like, oh, how far is he? I'm like, he's like 20 minutes away or whatever. And she's like, well, he needs to come back right now. You need to go to the hospital. Blah, blah, blah. And then my mom's running in the background. She's like, did you eat? You better make sure you eat because they don't let you eat when you get to the hospital. Uh, uh, uh. Mind y'all, I am dripping. So I went and got a towel and put it in between my legs. And like, there wasn't another thing. So then they also told my mom and her friend, they're like, oh, lay down so like you don't lose that much fluid. So I'm laying down. But at the same time, I'm like, if I'm going to the hospital, I got to pack a bag. You're telling me to eat. I, I don't think I really ate all day. So I'm like, I want to eat if they're not going to let me eat at the hospital. So I'm just trying to do like a whole lot of stuff while my water is leaking or whatever. So, um, I think my mom called my boyfriend and told him before I even got a chance to um, call him or whatever. So then he calls me and he's like, he's on his way back or whatever. And yeah, that was that. So waiting for him to come back, I ate something really quickly. I packed a little bag, but it was nothing in it. I didn't have a hospital bag or anything prepared because granted, I still had like how many i had like seven more weeks till my actual due date so i didn't I, my, mind you my sister she's like oh do you have a hospital bag packed and i'm like um no i was gonna pack it after the baby shower because you know the baby shower i get you know some of the stuff i need and also i wasn't expecting to go into labor this early so i didn't have no backpack but for that specific moment all i packed was my phone my laptop my phone my laptop my camera a toothbrush and that's all I packed. I didn't pack no clothes. I think I packed, I have like some fuzzy socks. I packed that to walk, and my slippers to walk around the hospital. But other than that, I didn't pack no clothes. So boom. My boyfriend finally gets here. And I'm in a pink robe. I have my pink um, DSU shirt that I had on in the vlog. I don't have no underwear on, no pants. I have a towel in between my legs. I tied up the road, the robe, and we left. Just how, how I came in. So we get to the hospital. We go to the emergency room side. Mind y'all, I had never been to this hospital before. But it was the hospital that I always planned on giving birth in or whatever. So my insurance and all that, that isn't in the system. But we get in through the emergency room. And I'm like going to pull out my car. Mind y'all, on our way to the hospital, I'm not contracting none of that. I'm not in pain. My water just broke. And I'm just leaking. And it's just like, okay, what's going on? So I get to the hospital. So after I check in, they had bought a wheelchair downstairs or whatever and pushed me up to some room or whatever. So we entered the room and it's mad doctors and nurses and it's it's just looking like it's a class going on. And I was like, oh, y'all not finna, I'm not about to be the test dummy test subject, but it's just mad at them for no reason. And it is one lady that's like explaining to them what's going on and what she's about to do. And I'm like, all right, well, none of y'all is trying nothing on me. So <laughs> yeah, so I, I get up from the wheelchair and get into this little stretcher that they had for me and the poking begins. So they drew some blood and then I, at the time I didn't know but that's when they had entered the first IV in my arm and I was bleeding a lot <laughs> but yeah and it really hurt. Um, then the head doctor I guess had came in he was like all right we're gonna check your cervix to see if you're dilated or anything blah blah blah. So then he checks and he enters his hands or fingers whatever in me and he's like oh that's the baby's head my boyfriend's like oh shit and i'm just like so it's like right there that you can feel it that easily he's like yeah baby's head head down but that's a good thing blah 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 so at this moment i'm thinking all right i guess my sis is coming tonight or tomorrow it's about to be one two three i ain't finna be in here long mind y'all here's the thing so my water broke on the fourth and my baby shower was the eighth so yeah but again, I'm thinking, I'm like, all right, she's going to come tonight, you know, be out of here in two, three days. I'll make it to my baby shower. That was not the case, y'all. So after he had, you know, checked my cervix or whatever, I wasn't dilated at all or anything, but he did feel the baby's head or whatever. Um, so they moved us to a different room. So now in this other room, another doctor had came to speak to me. Um, they was telling me that I had to get the steroid shots, which in the case that your baby is born early, um, it helps their lungs, I don't want to say grow faster, develop faster. Um, and yo, that shot freaking hurt. Got it in my butt. You got to get two of them. One, um, Two of them within 24 hours. So they give you one and then 24 hours later, they give you another one. So I got the first shot while I was in that room or whatever. 
hurt really badly mind y'all the nurse that originally told me i had to get the shot she was like oh you can get it on your arm or your butt then the nurse that actually gave me the shot when she come in she's like all right roll over and i was like um the nurse the other nurse told me i could get it in my arm and she's like oh well you know i normally recommend the butt because you know you got more fat there so then i'm looking at her i'm like so it hurts and she's like yeah and i'm like as many tattoos as I got, y'all, I don't do needles. Needles make me really nervous, but I took it like a G. The first time definitely hurt more than the second time. So we're in there. They had took my insurance information. I had to fill out mad paperwork because, again, this was my first time at this hospital, so I still wasn't registered. Mind y'all, at this point, I'm still not in pain. I'm not cramping, no contractions, none of that. So they transferred me to another room. So now this was the high risk room or whatever that I had showed in the vlog. Really big room. It was a section for the baby. All that good stuff. So I'm in this room. So when I first got there, they had me on a liquid only diet. So I could only drink liquids. I could only eat jello. They gave me this nasty chicken broth that was so nasty. And it was just really bad. I was so freaking hungry, y'all. So then the next day I had got a nurse that winded up... Um, she was like, I know you're hungry, so I'm going to see if we can switch your diet over to, diet over to some real um, food. And shout out to my sis because I got some real food after that. We're going to fast forward a little bit because like I said, I was in the hospital for really long. Oh, so I skipped the part. Before we got transferred to the high-risk labor and delivery room, when we were still in the first room that they had put me in, um, the doctor was basically explaining to me what's going to happen or whatever. She's like, so basically, um, we don't... In, like." we once you hit 34 weeks that's when they normally start inducing people and at this point i was only 33 weeks and like like two days later i i would have been 34 weeks so they're like we're not going to induce you yet you can wait till the um the 34 weeks but my whole mindset i was like i don't want to get induced and she was like okay so if you don't want to get induced it was pretty much just a waiting game from waiting game from that point on we was gonna wait it out and see if my sis decided she wanted to come on her own so after they checked that it was my water that actually broke and again i wasn't dilated my cervix wasn't you know broken or anything it was still completely intact so at this point, I'm like, okay, so can I go home? Mind y'all, I like heard stories of people who's what, like they're closer to their due date, their water breaks, they go to the hospital, they check to see if they're dilated, and if they're not, di if you're not dilated, they send you home. So I'm like, why do I have to stay here? I was so irritated that I had to stay. So I'm like trying to find any loophole possible to the nurse, especially considering that my baby shower was in four days. Like, so I'm telling the nurse, I'm like, I can't leave and come back. Like none of that she was like i mean you can but it's it's a certain term for it i forgot but basically like if i leave and something were to happen the hospital wouldn't be held ac accountable for it she was like oh i highly suggest you don't leave and that you stay because anything can happen really fast and she was just telling me a bunch of stuff that had me scared and I'm like all right i'm gonna stay put but i'm not gonna hold y'all i was really butt hurt like yo i'm about to miss my my baby shower like all this money spent just finished getting my dress tailored i was so irritated but by the grace of god y'all the day before my baby shower we called the center that the baby shower is in and we at we told them what happened we're like i went into labor or whatever can we reschedule like do y'all have any upcoming dates available and granted they did it isn't till november but they did so i was happy about that but it's like all right i got to reschedule because the um everything was paid in full everything was paid off so we didn't owe anybody any money but it's like nobody was giving us our money back either so all right, we got the green light from the center. Now I had to check with the decorator. So I told her what happened or whatever and see if we were able to reschedule for that day in November. And by the grace of God, she was able to reschedule. So that definitely made me feel a lot better about the situation because I was a little irritated. But once everything got rescheduled, I'm like, all right, cool. She can come whenever she wants. She was going to come whenever she wanted regardless. But I, I, that made me feel better about the situation. Quick little self promo because I'm adding some more lip gloss. This lip gloss is from my brand Catrice the Brand. I will leave the link in the description box and if you guys are subscribed to my channel and watch my videos y'all get a special code. So use the code Shantrice for some money off your order. The lashes I'm wearing are also from Catrice the Brand. These are in the style After Dark. So shop now um so yeah back to the story so again over the course of me being there for nine days they did a lot every day all right so for the beginning i was hooked up to the um baby monitor the monitor her heart rate and my co contractions i was hooked up to that for two days straight like 
all through the night. I had to sleep with it on and all that. It was so uncomfortable. And I was on some antibiotics and something else. The antibiotics, because when your water breaks, you're at a higher risk of infection. So they just wanted to make sure like I didn't get an infection, which was also another major reason why they didn't want me to leave the hospital because the infection could also, you know, harm the baby. So for two days, I was hooked up to machines all through my sleep, just super uncomfortable. The IV in my arm was really uncomfortable. It hurt and every nurse that came in to um, change my little bag that was connected to the IV, they had mentioned how it was like oddly placed. Like they was like, I know you're uncomfortable because of where it's at. And this arm actually left a scar right next to my tattoo, but this arm, it healed up. You can't really see where the IV was, but yeah so that was my first two days um after i was able to be taken off of the monitors they had transferred me to another room it was still high risk but i guess it wasn't that high risk because it wasn't a delivery room like if the baby was to come i would have had to move to another room so this room actually had a fridge so they must have knew i was going to be in there for a while also every morning somebody would come in well two people would come in at 6 a.m talking to me asking me a bunch of questions waking me up out of my sleep y'all if anything being in the hospital as long as i have been definitely prepared me for when she does come home because if i was asleep they didn't care they was waking me up <laughs> they was coming in early late at night all that good stuff so my sleep pattern now is definitely adjusted to that so when she comes home i think i'll be i'll be good um so yeah so come to find out actually though those two people that were coming in the morning were the people that delivered her so i guess they wanted to get acquainted with me over my stay and just every morning ask me questions like if the color of the fluid had changed because i wasn't leaking the um like my water sack wasn't leaking the entire 10 days or nine days or whatever before she got here like it, i came in and it was a lot the next day it wasn't that much and then it stopped for a while then it would only happen in the morning one time a day and then it would stop like it was never too much so yeah they was um checking to see if like it changed in color and smell all that good stuff and basically i was fine like i was just chilling i was never in pain i was fine so we're gonna speed up to the day before um she came because my whole thing was I'm talking to my family and everything and everybody's like your water broke but like they're not inducing you she's still not here like babies need the amniotic fluid inside of you to you know survive granted also they're also every day they're also making their own amniotic fluid for them to live in so like as I was losing some she was producing her own to fill it back up but that wasn't the point um they all just like my family all just found that real sus like how your water broke and they're not like they're willing to let you not be induced so i took it upon myself and i'm telling them i'm like oh like is there a way to check how much amniotic fluid is still you know surrounding her so they're like yeah you got to do an ultrasound blah 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 so the day again at this point i didn't know it was going to be the day before i went into labor but the day before she was born um is when they did my uh ultrasound but it was also like a testing that she had to get points and all this she passed the test but i'm not too sure exactly what the test was but her amniotic fluid levels were good um the day of the sonogram which again was the day before she was born the doctor also told me well the ultrasound tech also told me how much she weighed and she weighed five pounds and between six and eight ounces but the day she was born she weighed six pounds and five ounces we're gonna talk more about that at the end of the video so boom she passed her little sonogram test that they had did and that was that so now we're on september 13th 2020 which is the day i gave birth so boom that day again people came in at six o'clock that morning talked to me i went back to sleep my breakfast came at eight o'clock i ate my breakfast went back to sleep um and then now it's like 11 o'clock so the nurse i had today like every day i had a different nurse but sometimes i would see the same nurse more than once throughout the week so this specific nurse that i had she normally lets me sleep she don't really be waking me up to hook me up to the monitor and all that to monitor the baby heart rate but this specific day she had said something when she came in but again i was asleep so i didn't really hear her all i heard was 
I need to put you on the monitor now. So I'm like, okay, whatever. So she hooks me up to the monitor or whatever, and then she leaves back out. So now I'm up, chilling on my phone. So she comes back in and she mentions, she's like, oh, the baby's heart rate is really high. Um, we're just gonna like monitor, monitor it more closely. So then I'm like, okay. She's like, you're also contracting. Are you feeling it? And I'm like, no, I'm not feeling anything or whatever. That's that. So then she leaves. So then the doctors, the people that be checking me at six o'clock in the morning, they come back in and they're talking to me. They're like, okay, so this is maybe after about 20 minutes of me being on the monitor. They're like, so yeah, the baby's heart rate is really um, high. So we're actually going to induce you today. It's not recommended that she stays inside any longer, blah, blah, blah. So then she proceeds to ask me questions. She comes to fill my belly and she was like, okay, baby feels like she's head down, blah, blah, blah. That's a good thing, blah, 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 blah. So she's like, you're about to be transferred to the labor and de delivery room. So I'm just like, she's coming. Like at this point they said induced. So like, I'm like, she's coming. So we get transferred to the labor and delivery room. So again, at this point I am chilling. Mind y'all, um, when they were saying that her heart rate is really high, they also said your contractions are back to back as well. Mind y'all, I'm not feeling these contractions at all. I'm just chilling and I'm like, wow, really? Like, okay. So when we get to the labor and delivery room, the doctor, she's like, all right, I'm gonna check your cervix. Mind y'all, this is the first time that they checked my cervix since I got admitted in. So at this point it's like nine days, 10 days since I've been in the hospital already and this is the first time they're rechecking my cervix so y'all first of all at first it was just really uncomfortable i was able to take but she did something and it was just like i like get out <laughs> like it mm -mm. so she checks my cervix and she's like well yeah she's 4.5 centimeters dilated so i'm like i'm 4.5 what mind y'all y'all only got to be 10 centimeters to start pushing so i'm halfway there and i'm chilling i'm not contracting i didn't feel i'm not feeling anything so i'm like do i still gotta get induced <laughs> like and they're like yeah because like we don't know how how can i word this they didn't know if this 4.5 centimeters happened over the course that i've been there or if it all just happened this morning so they're like they don't want it to take too long so they're gonna still induce me to make it go by faster so still had to get the penicillin penis penicillin i don't know if i'm saying that correctly so yeah and mind you this was my whole thing the whole time i was there i really really just didn't want to get induced because one I heard that it does make it hurt more because your body isn't gradually getting the contractions. They just all come like boom, boom, boom. That, and I didn't want that. And two, um, sometimes it can be stressful on the mother, which will then affect the baby. So I just really didn't want to get induced, but at this point I didn't really have no choice. So yeah, after she checked my cervix, I had to go to the bathroom. So I want to use the bathroom and then they hooked me up to the machine to start giving me the penicillin. And y'all, as soon as I got that penicillin, that is when I started feeling those contractions, y'all. And I really, really, really tried to thug it out, y'all. Because that's another thing. I went in there with the mindset that I'm going natural. I'm not doing no epidur epidural. So, again, I'm trying to thug it out. I let them rock for like a good 15, 20 minutes. I even tried to vlog it for y'all, but it was, it was a fail. But after 15 minutes, I was like, I cannot do this. Mind y'all. When they first kicked in and I first started feeling them and I was in pain, the nurse was asking me, she, she asked, she was like, do you want an epidural, any pain medication? I didn't want no medication. I didn't want no epidural. I was like, no, I'm cool. I got this. I'm fine. But after 15 minutes, I, I told my sis, I was like, I need that epidural. Go get it. So she got the um, epidural guy to come down or whatever. And mind y'all, something they don't tell you, well, not something they don't tell you. I guess it's kind of pretty obvious, common sense or whatever, but like, you can have a contraction mid them trying to put the epidural in, in you. Mind you, you're not supposed to move. So that was one of the hardest things, be trying to stay still and having a, con a contraction and it just hurt so bad. And the guy, if I'm having a con contraction when he's about to do it, he's not going to wait for that contraction to be over. He's still going to proceed. And I'm just like, I'm in pain right now, sir. Like, you can't wait. But overall, the actual epidural didn't hurt. It didn't hurt. I've been getting poked all week and had needles in me all week so I expected it to be a lot worse from you know the horror story stories and stuff you hear about epidural it wasn't bad y'all it's like a regular little shot or it's comparable to the freaking um IV they put on you when you first go in before you even go into labor if anybody was 
considering um getting epidural so after i got the epidural y'all i'm expecting this epidural to work like this like i'm expecting the medicine to shoot up my back and i wasn't gonna feel nothing no more it took a good like 15 minutes for that epidural to kick in so i'm like i'm glad i asked for it when i did otherwise i would have been feeling these contractions a lot longer than needed so epidural finally kicked in they had to put um a heart rate thing blood pressure thing on me they were like since you got the epidural we just gotta um keep tra keep track of your heart rate and stuff and i had to get an air mask to uh, oxygen mask to breathe through for whatever reason and it was just a lot going on so then so then y'all i had a bonnet on originally and she comes the nurse that was taking care of me she comes in and she puts the blue cap on me now y'all i don't watch enough youtube videos youtube labor and delivery videos vlogs whatever to know that the blue little bonnet and like the blue jumpsuit and all that is for people that are getting c-sections so yeah just just keep that in mind so my sis put the the blue blue cap on me so in my head i, I ain't really say nothing but i'm just like i ain't getting no damn c-section okay so the epidural finally starts kicking in and sadly that's when i picked up my camera to start vlogging again y'all so once you get the epidural they have to put a catheter so you can use the bathroom because you can't at this point i couldn't feel my legs it, it was weird like i was expecting to really not be able to feel my legs but like i was it, it felt like my legs were asleep y'all know when y'all legs fall asleep and then it gets that like tv static feeling that's how my legs felt and like I, like they had me like move them and like try to lift up and I felt like I wasn't doing any of that but it, it obviously was happening so to an extent like I felt my legs but I didn't feel it ain't making sense but y'all just gotta get epidural and figure out what I mean so yeah um when you get the epidural they have to do the whole catheter thing so you can use the bathroom so my sis comes back in to enter the catheter or whatever, and when and when she's and when she's going to enter it, she's like, "Oh, hi, baby!" And me and my boyfriend, we look at her like, "What?" And she's like, "Yeah, the baby's head is right there. Um, you're having a baby." And I'm like, "What?" Like it all just ha it all just happened so freaking fast, mind y'all. When she went to put the catheter in, I had only had the epidural for like 30 minutes at this point, so yeah things were happening really fast like for you to she lifted up the blanket and saw the baby's head so that had to say something so she called the team or whatever for them to come in blah 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 everybody came in um and everybody was just talking about how like you can really see the baby's head so i'm like damn i wish i could see and they're like oh you want to see so they had a mirror that they put down there and y'all i actually watched the whole thing and i'm actually kind of glad the mirror was there because i feel like it was kind of my motivation to keep pushing like every time i came up the mirror was there so i was able to see the progress i was making and it, it made me go harder you know what i'm saying so yeah i watched myself push out my baby like yeah i did that period um so yeah yeah so after they had brought the mirror or whatever the lady had came in i caught all this stuff on the vlog so y'all can go um back and watch the vlog but basically she was coaching me through it like what to do how to breathe through it all that good stuff she had made it comparable to she was like all right you're gonna push but like if you was taking the biggest crap of your life so mind y'all as I'm pushing, like when it actually started, I didn't feel like I was pushing. So that's what, and I had like heard and read this about um, epidural that it makes the pushing process a lot harder because you don't really feel what you're doing. And that is very true. At first when I started pushing, I was like, I feel like I'm playing a game and like I'm trying to beat the game because it ain't no stopping you know what i'm saying i don't know if that analogy made sense to y'all but i just felt like i was playing a game they're like no this is the real deal honey so yeah pushing for me was honestly probably the hardest part because i couldn't feel what i was doing and i felt like i was just straining myself and i was so out of breath but i felt like i wasn't doing nothing or i wasn't doing enough but granted i was only pushing for like 15 20 minutes and then my sis came so like i said my labor and delivery was really fast they woke me up at 11 o'clock that morning to put me on the machines and we're gonna like i don't even know when my labor started like do i consider me going into labor as soon as my water broke 10 days ago i know i wasn't in no damn labor for 10 days y'all 
or do I consider it from that morning when they hooked me up to the machines and said my contractions were back to back. So that's what I'm going by right now from when they hooked me up to the machine. So that was 11 a.m. and then I gave birth at 4.24 um, p.m. So I was in um, labor for about five hours, five hours and a half. So yeah, wasn't long at all. Like I said, everything happened really quick. So as far as vlogging, I wasn't expecting things to happen that quick. So I didn't pick up my camera. So boom, pushed her out. My sister's here. They had to take her over to the other side of the room. And I did tear a little bit. So they did have to give me stitches. But y'all, I didn't feel nothing. And all the nurses, they're like, the fact that I really didn't feel anything, they're like, you must have had the best epidural ever. And I'm like, well, isn't this what epidural is supposed to do? Like, ain't I not supposed to feel anything? But like, I literally didn't feel nothing. The whole thing was a breeze. The most painful part of the whole process was the contractions when I was actually feeling them because of the penicillin. And I've been saying, I'm like, yo, I feel like if I didn't get induced, I would have been good like my contractions wouldn't have been bad at all considering that I was never feeling any of them until they gave me that damn penicillin okay and being that I got to 4.5 centimeters on my own I was like I would have had a easy breezy beautiful labor <laughs> nah but <laughs> that it probably would have been one of those births that like the baby literally just slides out and you just don't even realize it because yo I really wasn't feeling anything so whatever so mind y'all, before I even gave birth, the nurse, when she was coaching me through it, she was like, oh, what I be telling people is like, just think of all the food that you're about to be able to eat that you couldn't eat while you was pregnant. And then she looks at my boyfriend and she's like, yeah, and dad, you're going to have to go out and buy her whatever food that she wants, blah, blah, blah. And then one of the doctors has said some, something about Chick-fil-A. So then my boyfriend was like, oh yeah, Chick-fil-A is something that she, is the meal she said she wanted after because I was craving Chick-fil-A for the past few days. Then it all hit us that it was Sunday and Chick-fil-A was closed. So I was so butt hurt because I was really looking forward to some Chick-fil-A, y'all. So after I had gave birth or whatever and I was finally able to eat because I was so hungry because I haven't eaten since 8 o'clock that morning. I'm glad I really wasn't in labor for that long because you really couldn't eat throughout that whole process. Now, if I would have been in labor for like 10 hours, I would have been hangry. I would have been upset, okay? Um, so I ate right after. My boyfriend's sister's baby shower was the day before, so I had a plate of food that he had bought me. So I ate i ate that food okay and then like five minutes later i started feeling really nauseous and i threw it all up so then the nurse she was like yeah that's because you ate too much too fast and she was like i was gonna say something but you kept mentioning how you was really hungry so i just let you eat it but it's normal blah 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 so i'm just like all right now i'm hungry again so after that they transferred me to another room which was the postpartum room it was upstairs and then i had the nicu doctors that came and talked to me and just t um told me about what's going on with her because again my daughter was born five weeks early so she was and still is in the nicu if you guys were wondering but she's doing great my sis will be home soon okay free her um but yeah I had the nicu doctors come and talk to me about like the process and what's going on how to cope with it blah 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 at this point my legs were still numb the epidural hadn't completely worn off yet but then the nurses had switched shifts so then the new nurse came in and at this point I wanted to go see my baby okay it, it was like five hours after um I gave birth but I, I still haven't seen her y'all so when I pushed her out they took her to the other side of the room or whatever and my boyfriend he was over there you know taking pictures got that little bit of vlog footage that they incident or whatever then they did bring her over for like two seconds for me to see her and then they had to take her back up to the NICU so yeah I wanted to see my baby so when the nurses um switched shifts I had to do a walking test to make sure you know I was able to be on my feet um before I was able to go downstairs or whatever and I was fine but they did still put me in a wheelchair now y'all this is the crazy part okay listen to this so they had a girl come upstairs she was really young too but they had a girl come upstairs that was that had the wheelchair that was gonna take me um down to the NICU again really young like she was no older than like 23 I want to say she was like 19 because she looked really young but yeah so I'm in the wheelchair and she pushed me downstairs or whatever. So with the whole COVID thing going on, um, they don't let both parents in the NICU at once, which I think is so dumb. Like, I don't want to say it's dumb, but like it's, it's, it's kind of inconsiderate. Like I didn't, I, I don't like that rule. At the end of the day, we're her parents. When this is all over, she's going to be coming home to the both of us. Like they also had a rule like you can only 
sign for one other person to come see her other than mom so i put my, obviously my boyfriend as the only other person that can see her but i didn't see the problem with both of us being in the room with her at the same time when upstairs in the room that i was staying in he was in there with me so like if i did have something he would have it or if he did have something i would have it and one of us would still be allowed around it just i i didn't like that so yeah um Back to the girl bringing me downstairs to the NICU or whatever. So you have to stop and buy a desk, sign a book or whatever. Then they have this whole um, hand washing kind of thing for you to do to make sure you don't, you know, you're not bringing any germs into the baby. So the girl rolls me to the room and she's like, all right, this is the room, blah, blah, blah. So again, I only saw my daughter for like a brief two seconds. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> so I get up at the room that she dropped me off in and it's the incubator box or whatever and the baby's in there so I woke over to so that now at this point it hit me like even after I gave birth it didn't really it still didn't hit me like yo I'm a mother like I'm somebody's mom didn't hit me but seeing the baby in the box like that hit me like yo and it was just so freaking sad like seeing them all hooked up to you know with a bunch of wires in them and things in their nose and it's just really so freaking sad y'all so I started crying so I'm, I'm in there tearing so then the nurse comes in and then she was like oh hi what's your last name or whatever and I told her and she's like can I just see your badge um your band because they also give you a band that has numbers on it and like your baby has the same band with the same numbers on them so she looks at my band she's like yeah I had a feeling you're in the wrong room y'all <laughs> so in my head, I'm just like, what? And I'm like, the nurse is probably looking at me like I'm crazy. Like, you over here crying over a baby that ain't even yours. Like, <laughs> yo, but again, granted, the whole thing is just so sad to even see. So, regardless, even though it wasn't my baby, which looking back, it's just like, wow. But even still, the whole situation is really sad. So the nurse took me to my baby, my actual daughter, y'all. So yeah, I was down there with her for a little bit, but it was just really, like, anybody out there that has a child that was born early and had to spend time in the NICU, then y'all know the feeling, but it was not a good one at all. So yeah, I was down there with her for like an hour or so, and then I had went up because it was really late. And yeah, that was my labor and delivery experience, y'all. If y'all watched the vlog, and in case y'all was wondering how to say my sis name, her name is Kaya Catrice, okay? The Catrice, somebody had told me, had commented on the video to comment, I mean, somebody had commented on the vlog and asked me to explain like why I chose that name and all that good stuff. So, and what I was originally going to name her. So if y'all are real OGs and y'all been subscribed to my channel for mad long y'all know I always wanted to name my daughter Kalia because I'm Kalea and she was gonna be a mini me so it was just always Kalia blah, blah, blah. but my boyfriend he wasn't really here for the whole Kalia name so we didn't go with that from the um from the beginning we knew sh her name was gonna begin with a K because my name begins with a K and his name begins with a K so we wanted to do the whole K thing so yeah, originally Kalia was the first option for me, but it was a no for him. But the name we had originally settled on, her name was going to be Kaya Lynn Catrice. Because I felt like between Kaya and Catrice, it needed something. It needed something in between that. It, it was just sounding weird to me. But I was never going to call her Kaya Lynn. I was always going to call her Kaya. But on paper, she was going to be Kaya Lynn. So then that's when I had came to the conclusion. I was like, so her name might as well just be Kaya. I'm never going to call her Kaya Lynn. What's the point of long gaining her name and all this other stuff? And I was never going to tell you guys her name was Kaya Lynn. I was going to tell y'all her name was Kaya as well. So I'm like, we just going to drop the Lynn. Mind you, my boyfriend's sister and his grandmother, they really liked the Lynn because um, their middle name was Lynn. So when I'm like, we're going to drop it. <laughs> so dropped the Lynn and then it was just Kaya. Now as far as Catrice, um, my middle name is Chantrice which is a combination of my mother's first name and her middle name. My mother's middle name is Latrice so we wanted to do this whole generational thing where we pass it down the combination of our first name and our middle name so since I was Chantrice combination of Kalea and Chantrice is Catrice which is also my brand's name but I passed the Catrice down to my daughter 
But I was a little skeptical about doing that at first too because being that her name was going to be given with a K, when she has her daughter, is she going to give her daughter the middle name of Catrice too? Because a combination of Kaya and Catrice is Catrice. So I don't know if the generational thing may stop here or maybe she will pass it on to her daughter and just her daughter won't, her daughter's name won't be given with a K. I don't know. We're going to see. And then of course she got her daddy's last name. So that pretty much wraps up my labor and delivery story time. I don't want to make this much longer. If you haven't already, make sure you are subscribed to my channel at k.chantrice. And I did make my baby girl an Instagram as well when I finally do post her. So make sure y'all follow her at Kaya Catrice. Give this video a thumbs up. Chat with me in the comments below. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys. Ducks and girls, they always say that you're pretty for a dark skin, yeah. You're pretty for a dark skin.